And then of course the Fountain Blue, which supposedly is still opening as uh, the Drew, but I understand it's been put back now to quarter two 2022. Well, that's uh, if it ever opens in my opinion. Life's a coat of many colors It is never black and white Can't have one without the other The dark without the light In the summer we were lovers with the flame our hearts would burn A flame the autumn would smother And leave this heart to yearn Forever Just to watch you sleep We turn a blind eye to worry But such times we'll never keep I found a new smile this morning That doesn't come out as a frown a smile to wear while performing And to hide the tears of this clown Hi everyone, welcome back to the vlog and welcome to my updated five year strip walk. I last did one of these videos, um, it was May 2019. And there's been quite a lot of changes, you know. I mean, obviously Vegas is the ultimate city that evolves constantly. But I think even in Vegas terms, the last five years has been well, there's been huge change, huge change, particularly at this end of the strip and obviously downtown with Circa as well. So we're gonna take a look at some of that today. So the last time I was here, um, the Strat had just changed its name from Stratosphere and I got some footage uh, in the last strip walk of them tearing down the old Stratosphere logo up there and replacing it with that one, where it remains. But I guess the, the biggest change up here is the City of Las Vegas sign, which uh, I like, I really do like it. But I know they do have problems here with people late at night because there's no sort of vantage point to stand and you know, have, take a selfie or get someone to take your photograph in front of it. 
people end up running into the centre of the road there. And I know they do have an issue with potential accidents and Lord knows what. I mean, you can imagine if you're half cut after a few beers, you know, and you're running, <laughs> running across the road in the middle of the night, anything could happen. So I'm kind of surprised they didn't think of that. You'd think they'd put something in the middle there, wouldn't you? Um, but it's a welcome addition, and I quite like the fact it sort of separates the uh, strip from downtown. So you know you're entering downtown when you go under that, uh, that arch. See, so yeah, I like that one. So let's just head down to where all the action is. Obviously the fountain blue being the, uh, the big, big change. So we're, I'll meet you over. I just want to point out uh, that uh, holiday motel, which has changed a lot, actually. I'm, I was quite surprised myself when I saw it a minute ago. So I'll meet you straight over there at 2205 Las Vegas Boulevard. So here we are at uh, 2205, which uh, was the famous uh, holiday motel. Well, it was famous probably for me rather than anybody else <laughs> just because I love the sign so much and there used to be a swimming pool where that palm tree is so not only have they removed the sign this is soon to be a restaurant by the looks of it and they've changed the motel by the looks of it into apartments looks quite, kind of smart and actually I did notice um, down the road there when I crossed the road to come here there is an observation deck for the uh, Las Vegas sign to the right there but I mean the issue being that of course it's not in the center and people want their photo with everything in the center so anyway maybe it doesn't work particularly well like that the rest of the stuff here is uh, is the same as it's always been including fun city <laughs> I think there's actually a, a few less uh, wedding places. Oh, look at this. You can get uh, a pretend wedding photo if you want for 35 bucks. Why would you want a pretend wedding photo? Well, I guess for a joke. <laughs> so other than that, this is, yeah, unchanged really. So I'll meet you down at Sahara. So here we are outside uh, Sahara. It was still SLS when I was last here, but later that year they changed back to Sahara. The frontage is a lot better now than it was under SLS. You might recall their mascot was uh, like a it was like a blob, slightly in the shape of a man, and it was uh, where that uh, fountain is. <laughs> It was quite an odd thing. I never really worked that out, what the hell that was all supposed to be about, but... And I don't really know how Sahara keeps going. Although I did, uh, I got the monorail up earlier and walked through it to walk up to the Strat. Uh, and it was fairly busy, so it's obviously got its clientele and... It shares uh, the Players Club and is uh, owned by the same people that own Grand Sierra Resort in Reno. Obviously, I found that out during Bridge Across America. They did go through a phase at Sahara of trying to entice YouTubers in, saying they were, you know, sort of friendly, social media friendly, and would allow live streaming and that type of thing. But that seems to have died off lately. I don't know whether the guy that was driving that left or whatever, but anyway, looks pretty cool from the outside. There's a Chickies and Pete's in there as well, which I think all of those properties owned by the people that own uh, Grand Sierra, etc., have a Chickies and Pete's in. And then over there, you might remember the old Lucky Dragon, where I got thrown out for uh, <laughs> trying to film, or told to stop anyway, I wasn't thrown out. So it's not a massive uh, place. bar in the centre there. In fact, you get a very good view from this second level. And I presume that is the Lucky Dragon. Quite impressive. Imagine having that as a light in your front room. 
You also get a good uh, overview of the casino from up here. So I would say it sort of focuses more on the table games. And then they have slots pretty much in each corner. Uh, but what a disaster that place was. I mean, just totally bizarre. I mean, I did uh, read that it was bought by some uh, a consortium of Chinese people and, and was developed purely so they could get a visa to the States. Now, I don't know whether that's true or not, but it was, it was certainly a rumour that was doing the rounds um, a few years ago. And it would kind of make sense, wouldn't it? Because, I mean, nothing, <laughs> nothing goes uh, a bus that quickly, you wouldn't think. So if they sort of did it for, you know, to bypass certain laws or whatever, or certain requirements to get a visa, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. So we're gonna, now going to head down to, well, what is currently the big news in Vegas, really. Fountain Blue. It's spelt Fontaine Bleu. Uh, but I went in there last night and I said, right, despite the spelling being Fontaine Blue, how do you pronounce it? And she said Fountain Blue. Everyone's calling it Fountain Blue and that's what it is. So they, you got that officially from a representative at the player's uh, card desk. <laughs> so I will meet you outside the entrance at the back there. So here we have it in all its glory. And I have to say, they've done an incredible job tarting this place up. Because whenever I looked at it, there were whole, there were big gaps in the structure where I know they had a whole load of pigeons that had taken uh, it as their home. And I really, at the time, I could, I could not see this place opening. Now, when I did the last strip walk, it was due to open in quarter two 2022 and it was due to open under the name of the drew now that uh, deal subsequently fell through and they went back to, or they reverted to the original name of fountain blue so a further delay from q2 2022 to q4 2024 but hey, we'd waited 20 years, so what's another couple of years, eh?
but I had um, a night out here for in this end of the strip for the first time in probably 18 years last night and I think because um, you, know, you only had circus on its own or you know you had Westgate to the left here and nothing else there wasn't really anything to draw you up for a whole night out that was the thing uh, but now you have uh, Fountain Blue Resorts World and Circus Circus to me it's it gives you a reason to come up here and have what I would consider a proper night out you know meaning that you can hop you casino hop a bit and if you're not feeling lucky in one place you can go to the other and I had a really really cracking night last night here like, it really was like the good old days of the north end of the strip um, and I preferred Fountain Blue to Resorts World actually I quite like the decor in there a little bit more the bar area as I mentioned in the regular vlog is outstanding but um, regardless of, of which one you prefer of the two there's no doubt about it they're really really nice properties the pair of them um, and it's just uh, quite uh, funny that you've then got Circus Circus that it's sort, sort of like the <laughs> the, uh, the spot that on your backside that just refuses to go it keeps it keeps it keeps hanging around you know so uh, you know it's, it, it just makes me laugh but it's tell you what Vegas is all the better for Circus Circus uh, and again I uh, thoroughly enjoy going in there last night as well and uh, incidentally <laughs> as you probably saw in the regular vlog it was uh, I won in Circus Circus lost in Fountain Blue what I won in Circus Circus and then lost in Resorts World so and I think that would tend to be <laughs> a theme if I if I keep coming to these three properties I would imagine and I think I will I think I think in future trips now I will make you know a night of coming up the north end of the strip for a night out I mean it's it, it literally is worth that I mean, I would like to develop another player's card outside Caesars and MGM, I must admit. Um, whether that's Win Encore, Venetian Palazzo, Resorts World or Fountain Blue, it needs to be one of those. So we'll see how we go anyway. I was singing Fountain Blue's praises to Suzanne on the phone this morning anyway. And I'm sure the uh, pool will be awesome when it opens in the summer. So I'm going to cross over now and walk past Circus Circus and actually I didn't notice last night but it looks like it's had a lick of paint. It looks far more pink than it, than it did so we're going to have a look at that. So there's a view of uh, Fountain Blue from the back. And yes uh, Circus has definitely had a lick of paint which I couldn't notice in the dark last night but look it's uh, much more pink than it used to be and one thing I was actually quite surprised about last night um, is that slots of fun when it was taken over I know they made a big thing about they were going to develop slots of fun um, but it's almost as bad as it was <laughs> when uh, it was taken over it's just a few really old machines in there and nothing else uh, and I, I thought they were going to make something more of it really but they haven't and I doubt they will now if they haven't up to now if you know what I mean and the other big thing of course up here which we won't go and see today because I want to go and visit it when it's dark is the sphere now I don't think the sphere was even an idea was it when when I was here in 2019 I don't recall it being but that is I mean that's a huge uh, undertaking that uh, and by all accounts has been a real success since it opened in uh, September last year see I'll, sh I'll show you a bit of slots of fun actually as we're gonna walk this way I mean this place I really, really used to like it in here they always used to have a car didn't they uh, at the front that you could win that probably no one ever won and they used to have a car at the uh, 
front of Circus Circus as well for the same reasons but but yeah it's really sad in here now I'll quickly open the door and just show you there was like one person in here I, I, I came in here to use the restroom last night and literally this is it even the old bar and everything over there is just boarded up so yeah nothing to see here move on <laughs> okay there's a bar here that's pretty much it okay we'll move on a bit further down I'll meet you uh, just by Encore and Wynn so it has to be said uh, Resorts World really does look great I just walked through there again to get here and it is a, a lovely lovely resort but you do sort of wonder whether with Fountain Blue appealing to a similar demographic and then obviously with Win and Encore on the doorstep are there really that many customers to go ar around now I've not heard how well or otherwise Resorts World's done since it opened I mean, I assume it's doing okay. But I'll be keeping an eye on Fountain Blue and... Because you do wonder, how many times can you uh, chop through the same people? I, I did notice when I went into Fountain Blue and I joined the Players Club, they weren't uh, status matching at all, which I found quite weird, really. Uh, I heard that they were doing it on opening night, but they very quickly stopped, which makes no sense to me. I mean, I put through probably in both properties last night I don't know probably a grand maybe slightly more in, in terms of playthrough uh, I lost what 500 in Resorts World but played through quite a bit and lost 350 but I was like, almost 800 down in, <laughs> in Fountain Blue before I made a bit of a comeback so I put a bit of money through so it'll be interesting to see if I get any offers because I've not really ever played serious in, in uh, Resorts World before now but I know, you know, Resorts World is very popular with a lot of people and uh, not necessarily high rollers. You know, a lot of people just uh, do like it and have stayed there since it opened. So no reason why it shouldn't be the same for Fountain Blue, I guess. But I'm very excited with the, uh, all the de developments up here. It's really got me uh, quite buzzing about the whole north end of the strip again for the first time in a long, long time. So we actually get a slightly better view of the sphere behind Palazzo there. Well, the top left hand uh, bit of it anyway. And whenever I walk past uh, these properties, I kind of look at it and as if it's like a party I'm not invited to, because <laughs> I never go in there. I really, really, I mean, I, actually, I don't think I've, I think I vowed in the last strip war that I would do something with win or Venetian or both and still haven't but this corner does look so cool I think it really does I mean absolute quality It may be artificial, but it's absolutely beautiful. So I've just walked through Treasure Island to come out the front here and make my way down to Mirage, which will be the last stop on this uh, 
first part of the strip walk. And it's probably the first time I've been in Treasure Island since 2019. And this place is just a complete hodgepodge of ideas. And I don't think it's changed in five years either, really. Inside, they've not really changed the theming past the Buccaneers, really. But outside, it's all a bit of a mess. So, yeah, I think... I just think it needs a complete rethink which is unlikely to happen on the basis it's uh, sort of standalone and I'm sure it does perfectly well but I'm not sure I'll necessarily uh, be staying here again there's nothing to draw you here anymore I mean it used to be a real draw in fact uh, Suzanne's dad when he came to Vegas in the early 2000s he stayed at Treasure Island and every time I come back from Vegas he says uh, so how's Treasure Island then? <laughs> Because he remembers it as like, you know, that, that, I said, uh, Melvin, I said, you know, it's, no, it's nothing like you, you remember. Just remember how good it was back then. It's not like it is now. Uh, and he always laughs, but uh, he always said it was, the, it was the hot new property in town when he went. Which is probably true, actually. So we're just going to head down to Mirage now, uh, where we can uh, <laughs> pick over the bones of the hard rock guitar. <laughs> So the last uh, section of the strip walk, we'll focus on Mirage. So when, uh, if I do another one of these in five years time, this is gonna look a hell of a lot different. There'll be a big fuck off guitar hotel right here. Now, I think if you're a Vegas fanatic, you have to come to expect uh, things to change and you, you sort of embrace that. It's part of uh, what makes this city so uh, amazing. But I just, and I know I probably sound like an old fogey, but I just can't accept getting rid of this oasis. And, and yeah, it's man-made oasis, but it's still an oasis. just to put a bloody guitar hotel. I just, I just don't get it, I'm afraid, I really don't. I'm sure it'll look spectacular, I'm sure it'll look great, but this is just awesome here. As I always say, the, despite the fact this is uh, you know, built in the late 80s, it just looks superb still, doesn't it? It just never seems to date for me. But I guess uh, land is, you know, best spent on something that earns revenue and waterfalls and a volcano don't earn revenue. End of discussion. <laughs> Literally, end of discussion. See, I'm not sure when it all starts, all of the work, but it's going to be a hell of a lot of work, isn't it? You're, you're going to want to avoid this area of the strip for quite some time. And I wonder if uh, Treasure Island will market their new guitar view rooms. <laughs> anyway, that's the end of the strip, first part of the strip walk. We will pick up again tomorrow. I've had done a lot of uh, steps again today doing this. It's amazing what you cover. We will, step, uh, we will start again tomorrow from Caesar's Palace and work our way down. Speak to you again. Take care.